Alright, welcome back to Ricketts Reef Day 115, 120, somewhere in there. Um, as you can see, I am back from vacation, and if you noticed in my last video, I mentioned that I've had a diatom bloom, and I bought a whole bunch of new snails to eradicate those diatoms. Um, as you can tell, the snails have not gotten rid of all the diatoms. It's a very slow process. Uh, where they have gotten rid of the diatoms, it has not grown back. So that's a good sign. But it's just taking a very long time. Um, so what we're going to do now is going to make a video on aggressively attacking a diatom bloom uh, manually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some filter socks on the overflow pipes. I am going to scrub the rocks in the tank, do some water change, uh, and then finalize it with a period of lights out, maybe 24 or 48 hours, and see how that goes. That should put a good dent on the actual diatoms, and the snails will probably get rid of the rest. Hopefully. Let's take a close up here. Oh, this is a new camera. I got a flip to hold me over until the uh, PlaySport HD comes out. So this is a flip Ultra HD. I brought back the Fuji film because I didn't like the way it was looking. I didn't like the features. I didn't like the sound of the zooming back and forth. And so it was kind of kind of wasn't worth it to me. This thing's half the price too. And the uh, Kodak PlaySport will be about the same price as the flip. The only problem with the flip so far is I haven't found how to do macro mode, so when I zoom into the corals, um, you don't get a really, really good close-up. But this one's got really good color. So let's take a look around. If you notice the diatoms... Alright, move it, custard. The diatoms are kind of breaking off and floating away. That's a good sign that they're starting to die off but it, they need to, a little bit of help so I'm gonna get in there with a toothbrush and I'm gonna clean some off and see how that goes uh, like I've mentioned in the other video the diatoms do not seem to affect the corals at all so it's not a big deal and if you notice this rock here for some reason this rock the snails just went crazy on and cleaned up completely and where they cleaned it hasn't grown back for weeks so that's a good sign but for some reason they just don't go after the rest. You know, they'll take a random spot like there or in the back corner there is a random spot they cleaned up and it just why they only do random spots I don't know. Got a whole bunch of snails there. They like the glass the best so the rocks kinda seem to get missed and the sand bin in the back got missed. So what I'll do is I'll get in there and clean her up Let's do it. Alright, step one, put the towel down in front of the tank. That's right, in case my wife checks this out, I'm doing it right, babe. Alright, next. Alright, the next thing I do is I clean out the skimmer. So, I gotta shut her down here. That's, uh, nope, that's not it. There we go. Alright, that's just basically taking out this cup, cleaning it out. Now after I do a big uh, stir up clean, you know, if I'm doing the sand bed or something that's going to cause a lot of sediment into the water chamber, um, I like to put some filter socks on the outlets of the <coughs> overflow. This helps a lot with re-clearing the water and you know just getting that stuff out easy. I only leave it on for about 24 to 48 hours depending on how much stuff is kicked up. One thing I can suggest if you're going to use filter socks, use the mesh ones. Uh, Bulk Reef Supply carries them. They're so, so easy to clean. The felt ones I've got a few of and they're just terrible. They're a pain in the butt to clean. So mesh ones catches the large debris just as good as the felt ones. The felt ones are a little, you know, you get more fine particles out, but really it's not a big deal. Alright, I'm going to throw these on, those two return lines, because those are the ones that are mainly used. 
And the next thing to do is, while the return pump is running, I'm going to siphon out a bit of the uh, bottom of the sump. Um, that will get rid of the detritus that is collected on the bottom of the sump because I don't keep a sock on all the time. I'm actually thinking of getting some hermit crabs to keep down there to eat that stuff. We'll see. Um, once I get a few inches down, then I will turn the return pump off and the overflow will come into here. And I know it'll hold it. I know it'll hold it even if um, I don't siphon that little bit out. But this is just a guarantee. And I've got my uh, new water all ready to go. The right temperature, the right gravity. And it's been cycling for three days now. So it's good and ready to go. All right. All right, so the sump's all cleaned out. And I have turned off the return pump. Lots of room for water, so we're doing good. i um, going to go do the main tank. So here we are at the main tank. I've fed the fish, so they're going to be okay without food for a little bit. With the lights out, it's going to be hard for them to see their food. So they should be good. I'm going to go at these diatoms with the toothbrush, the gravel vac, the turkey baster and whatnot. And just going to give her and suck out as much as I can then do a period of lights out and see how that helps you know a little bit of an aggressive stance but we're gonna try it see how it works wish me luck 